work it, let's clean up Got in my plug now, let's re up Down to the ground now, let me up Let me up Thank you so much for joining me today like oh it's been a minute since i've just been since i put a video out and my apologies i need to get my life together i really do but if this is your first time joining me thank you so much if this is your first time joining me because of anisha anisha the lpn thank you so much i really do appreciate the love my girl appreciate the love uh if you have not already go ahead and subscribe press the bell i guess because that's a thing now and everybody says that okay but um just go ahead and stick through and um i'm gonna learn a little bit today okay so first off the bat i cannot believe it's been a year a whole year your girl's been a nurse for a whole year Chineke, like i've been caring taking care of people for a whole year that's mad good man. i'm so i'm so proud of myself sometimes you do have to take a step back and look at like whoa you've come that far from literally knowing nothing in nursing school till now you know and that's crazy so i can no longer claim new grad even though i'm gonna ride new grad label till i die but you know because you're always learning in nursing so it's okay the first hack i have for you is to use three gloves like i know y'all have heard of this hack right yeah so use it and literally it is the best usually i use two but after recent experiences with some massive cold browns three is the way to go okay three three okay but no for real so usually i wear like um a small a small and then a medium or like a small a small and a large so the the last pair of gloves you put on it's gonna get soiled so obviously you put that in the trash then the second set of a uh, pair of gloves that you put on those are gonna be for um when you're putting like butt paste cream on you know what i'm saying yeah you put them on and then um the last set of gloves is for when you're like after you've gotten the patient changed you're moving the patient up in bed you're doing the last little touches around the patient like not their body but like the room the sheets you know moving them up in bed kind of stuff like that so you just want to make sure that you don't give the patient cooties you don't get the patient cooties and we're just like cootie free yeah on that token when you are wiping a patient and they got that crusty grime doo-doo stain on because they should then clean them and let them stink for you yes shade i know yeah you just take some lotion and you um you put it as you're wiping it and that kind of slides the poop off like windex it like on some real stuff like it's that's a really cool tip to use i'm just saying alcohol swaps are, are so useful especially when you're dealing with like a massive cold brown that you just finally cleaned up and you just cannot get that stink out of your nose or you're dealing with c diff now if you've ever smelled c diff like you will never ever forget it that's what they say i thank god have not been blessed with smelling that you know that treacherous smell so i i don't know what it smells like but if you're trying to get that smell out your nose just rip that alcohol swap sniff it real good like you're sniffing sharpie crack cocaine expo markers but don't do drugs but any of that just sniff it and that should clear up your nostril passages or another thing you can do is sniff um coffee grounds now i don't do the coffee ground thing because um if you're in a rural hospital you don't have coffee grounds to smell you have that fake trash all liquid concentrated coffee yeah so I don't do that. Another good use for alcohol swabs would be um, when you're taking off IVs, like tabidums, especially when a patient has stayed like donkey days in the hospital and their IV and that area is just nasty and matted, got hairs, you got your hairy men or your hairy females, like whatever the case may be, or you got your elderly patients who have the most tender, frail, like absolute almost ripped to pieces skin so that's very good when you're taking off the tabidum you rub the swab as you're pulling off the band-aid so that way you keep the patient from you know being traumatized some more or you keep them from having any further skin breakdown or skin tears now when it comes to ivs whoo your girl has come a long way been able to stick people and you know not been like avoiding the mission halfway through because i'm scared but yes when it's coming to ivies and you're trying to find that nice luscious good old vein so you can stick the patient the best thing to do to find that vein is to feel yes to feel so if you're like me who has like really pretty rough hands and um you have like what's that called callus on your fingertips what i do is take my pinky finger the one that i don't use the most and i feel and i try to feel for where um you can feel the 
the like the bump or the raise in the vein, the plumpness of the vein. And essentially that will help you find your vein. If you're having trouble with um, getting the veins to pop up, a really good trick that I have just, I love to death recently that I just found out. One, you can take, uh, you can make warm compresses. So you take your four by four, not your four by four, you take your washcloth, you go dip it in water, squeeze it out, right? You take your little um, medicine bag or whatever bag that you usually fill with ice to give to the patient, you know, you take that, you put it in a, it looks like a Ziploc. You stick it in the microwave for 30 seconds, bring it out of the microwave. You have your baggie and it's obviously hot. You're going to put it in a pillowcase and that way it protects the patient from getting burnt. And you put it on the arm so that way the veins can pop up. Another method that you can use is you can take your glove, fill it with warm water and put it on the patient's skin. Like a lot of times when I'm walking and starting IV, I usually forget to get the warm compress. So getting the balloon and the water and you know having you a nice little quickie um, compress is really, really so efficient. So when it comes to priming your secondary tubing after you've already primed your primary tubing, you want to make sure that you've um, primed it completely, you've clamped it off, you've connected it to the primary tubing and you've set your IV infusion rates, volume, all that good stuff. Now when it comes time to letting it float, in order to prevent that air, you unclamp it and you turn the, uh, the secondary the opposite direction. So you know how you hang it up here, instead of hanging it, you flip it and you know you lower your arm all the way to the bottom. That way, the IV medication is pumping backwards, so it's drawing all that air that was in any of the tubing along the line, it drives it back into the secondary and then you can hang it. If it's confusing, I'll post a picture so I'm gonna show y'all what it's supposed to look like. But nonetheless, hopefully I was able to explain that clearly. But yeah, another thing you can do if you have a noisy machine, cause trust me, machines will drive you nuts. Like literally walking out the patient's room and then you hear this annoying sound. And you walk back in there and the patient's line says it's occluded because the patient has an AC and they have their arm bent like this. There's no way that um, medication is gonna flow cause obviously there's pressure here and the AC is occluded. So what you want to do is make sure you have a pillow. You put your pillow underneath the patient. That way the patient is resting their hand and the IV can flow freely through the AC. Now working on a bariatric unit like this tip has literally saved my back, my body, my soul, everything. When you want to put a patient on a bedpan, you want to make sure that you, you coat. When I say coat, generously you coat generously the bedpan with baby powder or whatever powder is by the bedside that is not obviously an irritant to the patient or an allergy to the patient so you coat it that way when you're sliding the bedpan in and out it does not scrape against the patient's skin and it does not cause any skin breakdown because skin breakdown can turn into um stage ulcers and that just prolongs the time the patient has spent in the hospital and we want to be good nurses we don't want to cause the patient any more trauma so yeah so just protect your patient's skin so that is all i have for life hacks nursing edition yes thank you so much for watching if you have not already subscribed please make sure you do and thumbs up because your thumbs up shows you to that what i'm bringing the content that i'm bringing is relevant and that you like to see it so yeah make sure you thumbs up and also go to my girl venetia's youtube and make sure that you uh go check her out and also on her latest video which should be her graduating from lpn school go ahead and comment below congratulations lpn if you haven't already be sure to check out other videos and that's it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this content if you do let me know and i'll see you guys next time bye oh, hey, gotta go hard go crazy pulling my string on you can let it whole team up yeah. too dirty let's clean up got my plug now let's re-up